Well, me and my boyfriend just got back. We we're having a we're celebrating a special occasion. Night on the town. We're having a nice dinner. We pay the check. We're heading out. Going to get on the bus home. And boyfriend looks at me. Comes in right close. And he says, you know what? I've been thinking a lot. And I've been thinking about getting into Bond. James Bond. Boom it. How are you doing? I'm not very good. I've never been much of a James Bond person. You know, movies are fun. Entertainment is fun. I don't know if you know this. Entertainment? Entertainment. But like, action movies are cool. I never sought out the James Bond movies. They were always there. I'd seen a couple growing up. Uh, 90s. Brosnan for life. Spoilers, that's not how this video ends. Brosnan for life is not how this video ends. <laughs> but I had a lot of time on my hand recently. There was supposed to be a movie coming out. It got delayed for some reason. Who knows? But I started looking back and I was like, I don't want to watch all of them. There's like 98 James Bond movies. I don't want to watch all of them. But I think if I do my research, narrow it down, go on Reddit. I can probably break down these characters and decide who is the bondiest Bond, or whatever. You know, who, by what metrics make a Bond, and what Bond maketh the metric, or something? I don't know. So come, join along. Stop by Q Branch. Yes, that's what it's called. Stop by Q Branch. Get your secret exploder watch and your fancy exploder car and <laughs> and come with me. Be, be my bond babe on this journey and I'll be yours. Connery, Thunderbond. We gotta start at the start. We gotta start at the beginning. We gotta start with Sean Connery. And I got a strong feeling we're gonna come back to Sean Connery because those are the ones that I watched a bit as a kid. Uh... I didn't really rewatch too many of his, but I did watch specific ones that I had missed out on. Saw Dr. No as a kid, enjoyed it. A few years later, saw Casino Royale, and was like, whatever. Same thing. I had seen Goldfinger. And that's... Mwah. It's one thing I... Working on this video, I asked my boyfriend for... Uh, his opinion on Bond because he doesn't he's seen like three and who cares good that's a good way to live your life and see three Bond movies maybe I should boil it too late the video's already started so what's more important in a Bond movie a villain who is in every way Bond's equal and is like it's a clash of ideas and stuff or being strapped to a table with a laser beam and he just went, why'd you even offer the first one? It's Laser Beam. Laser Beam is like the Bond trope. And I was like, good, perfect. Goldfinger. Yes, it's got the exotic locales, but it's got the laser. It's got the... Rewatched it. I wasn't sure about it. Rewatched it. It was amazing. It is top tier. It's got laser beams. It's got exotic locales. It's like, hey, top to bottom. It's got lighthearted. It's got shooting. It's got people dying. It's got babes getting golded was that this movie whatever the one that i had to watch for the first time was uh from russia with love and whoa that is a good movie i personally i would rank it among my top three favorite bond movies because it's it's everything you get out you want out of serious bond it's got a lot of 60s beats that are not great today and that's just a lot that we have to consider with the connery stuff He's got a big stamp on him. Connery's got the big oopsie-daisy stamp of what people thought at the time. Norms, as they say. Uh, racism, I believe, is the term. What Connery brings is silent, suave gruffness. I don't think I've seen him 
step above a light jog at all, and that's even while getting shot. The chops are brutal and blunt. Everything is that gritty real, but he's floating through it all. He's, he seems smashed through the whole thing. But, like, that's his secret. Like, that's what's carrying him along. That devil may care debonair. All in all, there's not much about Connery that hasn't been said. So, anything I say is just redundant. Kind of is the character to a point. And then we just have to go, what parts of the character do we want to keep and throw away? And we got to look at the other ones before we can say the good and the bad. Except for the racism is bad. Connery. Strong, brash, aggressive, takes no prisoners, is definitely hammered the whole time. Racist. So we're going chronologically. We got Connery done. Boom. In the back. Rising Her, Her Majesty's, Majesty's secret, secret Bond. bond. Chronologically, the next one is George Lazenby, British model who only appeared in one Bond film. This one. On Her Majesty's Secret Service. Had never seen it before. In my research, it came up that this is a real fan favorite. It's the dark horse. It's the cult classic of Bond films. And it might be my favorite. It's really good. It's Diana Riggs, Bond girl. Can't think of the character's name right now. Uh, the Motorhead. Brash. Just amazing characters. The action has this real push to be more theatric but a little edgier while still being goofy. And you have Bond doing almost like undercover detective work and stuff. Like you get Bond in a kilt, which is always good and rarely, if ever, happens outside of this. They do a bunch of locales that are all really done. The car, that car chase scene is so awesome. The music might be the best Bond theme. If I was doing a video on Bond themes, we'd have to talk about this one more. It doesn't hit as hard as Connery or other ones. Uh, it's a little hokey in parts. Again, we still have to bring up the caveat of the era. But I think if you wanted to make James Bond into like a cartoon show, like if you wanted to make Bond for kids or something based off Lazenby. It's a good even keel presentation of delicate, caring, nice guy. Oh, mm -mm -mm. Ooh -ooh. with a still oh punch in the face, jump explosion. Completely underrated. If you watch this video and leave with anything, you should leave with the fact that you should watch on Her Majesty's Secret Service. Interesting fact about the Lazenby movies, they are arguably one of the few Bond movies that has actual lore, has actual world building. Did you know Bond has a wife? Watch it. Watch it. And he's just so darn cute. It's almost like he's a model or something. Lazenby. Cute, handsome, funny, charming, suave, not afraid to wear a kilt. The 60s. More the Bond with the Golden Gun. Now we gotta talk about Roger Moore. The most derisive and parodied and criticized version of Bond, Roger Moore, doesn't have many good Bond movies to his name, period. There were a couple of his movies that I just refused to watch. Like, I was going through the list and I was just like, no, there's no way I'm watching Moonraker. Which, if I'm going to watch one more after this, is going to be Moonraker because of the Austin powers of it all. But I was like, no, that's, we're not going to be, we're not going to get a critical analysis of Moonraker. 
I'd already seen Man with the Golden Gun, and that's a bad movie. Might be the worst that I've seen outside of Quantum, which even it's probably worse than Quantum. I hate the song Live and Let Die, and once I looked into Live and Let Die even slightly, not a chance in hell I'm not watching Live and Let Die. But The Spy Who Loved Me has a reputation. The Spy Who Loved Me has a real big reputation. So I watched it for the first time. And this is just a video of me talking about which Bond movies are good. I'm not even talking about which but Bond makes Bond. Roger Moore has... Charm... And assertiveness at at cheese factory levels like the dudes pumping out provolone from his ears none of his strikes or punches hit none of his action has weight to it his suit never gets ruffled really but the spy who loved me the cinematography in that the soundtrack again I didn't look into it. This thing probably, if it didn't, it should have won Oscars. Like, it's a beautiful movie. That villain base is such a good level. Like I said, cheese. It, we are drowning in cheese whiz here. But that villain layer is so nice. Like, you actually, in that final scene, you kind of buy a threat behind Bond for a, a short second. It's the only time you get it in this movie or in the other movies that I've seen of his. Jaws, if not the best villain, what? Ah, right, right, my job is from Goldfinger, yeah, dude, totally, Jaws is like the best villain, and seeing him in this movie, seeing him in the element is so good, it's so entertaining, the, the whole Cairo scene, like, ugh, gorgeous movie, it's an unstoppable movie, Literally all of his other stuff I'm not even going to bother with, but, but, nobody does it better. Except for literally everybody else, except for... Bolton. Bolton. Bond to, to kill. kill. I watched both Timothy Dalton Bond movies. I was doing a toss-up on which of the two I would watch. I decided on one. It was bad. I thought, how bad could the other one be? It was bad. To be fair, Living Daylights is not the worst. But if you ever wanted, like, bad daytime TV Bond from the 80s. Like, that's... It's, it's corny. It looks... It looks like... I want to say Discount Remington Steel, but that kind of buries the lead on the next one. It feels like it's trying to be something. It feels like it's not a lot of things. And as, bur as hard-edged as they try and make it feel, it just comes off stale and inhuman. Dalton's Bond feels like... He feels like the Punisher. There's no charisma, there's no charm, there's oppression. There's no fun. It's bad. Don't watch it. Watch the start of Living Daylights. There's a really cool car stunt later on, I think. Watch it. Watch Living Daylights up until the point where he says, Living Daylights, and then go, oh my god, I'm getting out of here. <laughs> Dalton is both too much and not enough. Brosnan, the bond is not enough. Look, there's no bearing the lead on this one. As a kid who was a child in the 90s, and had every one of my friends had an N64, Goldeneye was on lock all the time. I don't think I'd ever seen the movie until a couple years ago. And my God, I really like it. It's it's the only one where you 
I wouldn't say it's the only one. There are some others. But it's one of the first times outside of Honor Majesty's Secret Service where you actually feel something for Bond. There's lore. There is story development to the Bond character. So there is a real world reason why the Dalton movies are so bad. And it's because when they cast Dalton, it was because they couldn't get Brosnan in the 80s when he was famous for being a spy. There's a show in the 80s called Remington Steel, which was just James Bond for TV. And Remington was played by Brosnan because he thought it would help him get Bond. And then his contract kept him from being Bond until the 90s. And then we get Goldeneye. Goldeneye. Number one with a bullet. I think, obviously, one of the greatest video games of all time overshadowed the movie, but the movie, as I found out, is renowned, so I rewatched it, and it's, it's beautiful. I think it's phenomenal. Brosnan has charm. More levels, Roger Moore levels of cheesy charm, but that's still charm. He never goes as more as Moore does. He's still got a good action. Sometimes he makes a face too much. But I think his movies really started to get the idea of, oh no, there's danger, actual danger, instead of just, well, we gotta go to a thing, look at a thing, and then flip a thing, and then... Pierce Brosnan was exactly who they needed to be James Bond at the wrong time. He is a displaced Bond. If they would have had him when he was... when they wanted him, would have been perfect. They got him too late. He has one good movie. The rest, as like... The parasailing scene? Personally, I rank him right up there. Personal favorite. He gets a lot of the things that I like about Bond right. But we didn't get enough when he could have been enough. Craig, Bond Royale. And now we get to the part we were all waiting for. Daniel Craig. Hey, front street on this one. Front street. Craig wins. It's, it's I think it's inarguable. What can be argued is that Daniel Craig's Bond doesn't... They, they, there's no joy in his life. His life is a vacuum of terror. There's literally no sunshine or joy anywhere in these movies. That's a major downside. The plus side is everything else is perfect. The scores can sometimes be wobbly. Cinematography can sometimes be a bit too choppy, and what's cutting edge right now? But damn. Craig has Bond, A1. He's charming. He's sexy, which a lot of the Bonds aren't. Let's go through the list. Sexy Bonds. Craig. That's the flame where we can start in the comments. Because he's not that handsome. Oh, some of them are handsome. Some of them are chairman. This guy is the one who seems like he fucks. You know what I'm saying? Outside of Connery, his is the only Bond that actually really feels like he gets gritty and dirty. Like he's actually in a pit, punching somebody in the mouth. As opposed to everybody else who's doing these dramatic hi and... The thing I want to say about Craig is that, measurably, you know, effects, cameras, budgets, quality, his movies are the biggest and the best, measurably, 100%. As far as story goes, and as far as emotional beats, and as far as runtime, they're a little all over the place, it's a little sloppy doppy, who cares? His Bond is perfect. I would say that any Bond going forward, any adaptation, any spy, needs to base themselves off Craig's Bond and then go from there. I think a lot of the issues that some of the other ones have uh, are, do, are non-existent with Craig. Uh, whereas the weaknesses that other ones had, Craig doesn't have. He's got the benefits.
He's got the powers. He is the culmination of all the mistakes while also vividly striving to do something new and different. I'm not going to say each Bond got better because that's markedly not true. I'm very excited for this next movie for no reason other than the fact that apparently it's his last one and then we can move on to something else. And there's that whole rumor of like, oh, they're going to name a new James Bond 007 in the movie. Like, sure, okay, cool. Who cares? If we're going to talk best Bond, it's Craig. Hope the next one's better. Hope the next one's interesting. Because the worst thing about most of these movies, half the movies that have James Bond in them, we're just immediately stricken off the list because they're just boring. They're known as being boring. Maybe that's what keeps a keeps a franchise going, is it needs to stay boring sometimes. That makes me not watch it for most of my life until all of a sudden I just get bored. And I go, oh, yeah, I'll pick a quarter of these 84 movies and I'll watch them and I'll try and make a smart character analysis. By the way, for more smart videos like this, thank you for letting me be your Bond babe through this journey. I'm not very good. I'm glad you could be here. It was nice to see you. Honestly, it's good. Good to be back. Good to be hitting the old screen. I'm still trying to figure this thing out. I hope this doesn't look like crap in the video. That's enough. This is where I need to cut it off. I love you. I love you. Okay. I'm not very good. You're great. Like, comment, subscribe, add, subtract. Dewey Decimal, to infinity and beyond. Brightest day, blackest night. I'm out. <laughs> what a great classic NVG bit. Say, would you like to see more of those? You should check out the YouTube page. Just look up Not Very G, or look for this Not Very Good logo, or find the links on the places that you love them. Any way you can, get that Not Very Good feeling.